All right, this card was not bad. Uh, a lot better than I expected, which isn't really saying much. Uh, more importantly, without all the breaks, uh, this card was how I like to smash. Uh, quick and satisfying for one side. Uh, I didn't love the start time. Uh, this shit started at like 1 a.m. 1 in the UK. But whatever, let's just get this one over with. Uh, I really like the commentary team on this one, by the way. Uh, Felder and Sanko can get it. All right, when this fight was announced, pretty much everyone was thinking the same thing about these two cupcakes. Uh, who the fuck are you? Uh, as is often the case when you get it, get two grapplers in there, uh, it kind of turns into a stand-up war. And while this shit was sloppy at times, uh, these two pieces of cake really did get after it. Now, the decision on this one was deemed to be a little bit of a shocker for some. Uh, I didn't really see it that way. In the first round, Alan Carr was going for single strikes and the other one was stepping in and timing combos. Uh, pretty clear first round for the other one. Uh, now, in the second, it was the same with a little less volume. And for me, Alan Carr won the round by getting Dos Santos uh, down and landing shots on top, including some really nice reverse elbows, which you don't really see a lot in MMA. So I really appreciated those. Now, the third was razor close with both women trading, but the Santos was fading a little bit more. And while she did end the round with a nice flurry, she left what should have been an easy decision for her to bum judges and paid the price for it. Uh, this was a split win for Alan Carr, and we were off to a good start on the cards. Uh, no grappling and no cake shots, so that was a little bit of a disappointment. Right, I was not aware that Tyrell was spending time at Team Elevation. What a wise career decision that could turn out to be. Uh, this was a great performance, but Hernandez is a lot at fault for how this went south for him. Uh, Tyra missed a kick at the start and ended up on the ground. And I thought, fucking hell, here we go. But Hernandez, like a complete brain donor, got into his guard and ended up spending the entire round on the ground defending off subs. What the hell are you doing, mate? Uh, Tyra is so patient down there, strong, uses strikes to set up tra transitional moments, was locking legs to prevent movement, and is just so slick on the ground. I do credit Hernandez for making it to round two, but why play with there with him on the first place? Now, the start of the round, uh, start of the second round, Tyra was so much more patient than in previous fights and found a very early opening, caught Hernandez with a check right, dropped him, and then beat him up there for a quick finish. Uh, this was a really easy win for Tyra. He called out Mikhaev, which makes a lot of sense, and I think he might actually beat him. Mikhaev's probably going to avoid that fight, seeing as how far Tyra is down the rankings. But this was a good win for him. Hernandez didn't help himself, though. What a dumb fucker. Alright, Santos missed weight by about four pounds and looked thick as fuck in there. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying, I guess. Uh, I do have some thoughts on this one, and none of them are particularly kind. I will try, though. Uh, Luana started the fight. Uh, using long range kicks and while having su some success with those, I guess. So she got the round, uh, she kind of claimed the round just based on that. Ego was doing well to shake off hip tosses. So yeah, that happened, I guess. In the second round, Luana managed to land a hip toss finally and have some control on top. And her left jab was starting to land and causing more damage. And now in the third, Luana had Ega clinched against the fence. And while it's not exciting from a fighting perspective, we did get some jiggling ass, and she was landing knees. Uh, Herb Dean then decided to break the position twice, which I really didn't like. She wasn't just holding the girl. He was literally shouting, be active, while she was actually kneeing her. Now, it didn't cost Luana the fight this time, but it could have, and that's the point. It ended up being a unanimous win for Luana. Shit fight generally. Uh, the thick bunda jiggles made up for it a little bit, I guess. Alright, I had high hopes for this one. And what can I say? I was really thwarted in that first round. Uh, Garcia overswang in the first. And Costa spent the entirety of the round uh, doing his best impression of a child's school backpack. Uh, a dull, boring, but a clear round for him. Uh, then suddenly exploded into life at the start of the second. Uh, Garcia caught Melky with a left and a knee as he came down uh, right up the middle. And as Melky tumbled, he followed and landed some of the most ferocious ground and pounds I've seen in a long time. Uh, busted him open like a, co a coconut. Uh, Chris Tignoni then tried to give him some time to survive in there. But this just led to a more sustained beat-in. So the, right was, the fight was uh, rightfully called off. Uh, Costa did go in for a sick single leg on the ref after it was over. Who showed some really slick defense to stuff it. Uh, respect for Mr. Toyoni. Uh, that was pretty hilarious. Uh, glad I avoided this on the betting slip. Melky slipped too wide and that proved to be the right call. Right, as much as I love seeing members of CKB get dunked on, they need to stop doing this to Shannon Ross. If he doesn't get cut now, then we know he's taking loads from the boys in the back. 
Uh, Ross has had so many, has just so many problems. When he tries to be aggressive, he doesn't have the pop to get anyone out of there. And in being reckless, he leaves his glass chin wide in the air to get cracked, which of course he always does. He's too small to fight at range and he has no ground game or wrestling. I will talk about the merits of Park for a second. He looked decently well-rounded and the sequence of body shots he landed to finish the fight, uh, the fight was nice. But it's against Shannon Ross. You have to actively try not to beat this guy and he'll still try and gift you ways to win. Uh, well done to Ross for surviving longer than usual. Uh, he needs uh, his Rogan uh, Brendan Shaw moment now. Uh, let him get the coffees in at CKB and stop this man going in there anymore. Uh, Park won, obviously. I even correctly predicted that Eugene Behrman would be too embarrassed to show up in the corner. I assumed he wasn't in the building until... Uh, this was a decent technical fight. Uh, Juse had a few approaches in this fight that really had Song struggling to settle. Uh, he popped the left jab at range, kicked the legs inside and out, uh, teeped and kneed the body in the clinch and showed really nice head, mo head movement when he needed, needed to. And what really impressed me was the patience and the willingness to let the damage accumulate rather than going for the kill. Now Juse never got carried away and left himself open to get popped, which was such a good game plan. Uh, this guy is very arrogant, but let's not blame him for that. He is French, they can't help it. What made me laugh though was seeing the aforementioned Berman in the corner for Jusse. So you can make the walk for a good fighter, but not for your boy Ross. Moving really dirty. Uh, dropped further in my book, you weasel. Anyway, Song tried to close the distance, but ultimately just got peppered. Uh, Jusse might be one to look out for. Really good solid win. Alright, this was the worst fight on the card and a demonstration of everything wrong with the scoring in MMA. Uh, cuddling does not count as damage. Now, the first round, Muniz had the back, but did fuck all. He got reversed and got smashed on the ground, so that was a clearly a park round. Now, the second round, Muniz did the same thing, but managed to uh, control the entire round, and Park got nothing off. Now, in that situation, you can say that's a Muniz round. I can accept that. Now, round three, guess what happens? Muniz controls Park on the floor for two minutes and again does fuck all. Park ends up on top for the remaining two, win two minutes, landing ground and pound after re reversing position. How the fuck do you call that fight for Muniz? How many times do we have to say it's a damage-based sport? Fuck the judges on this one. Terrible decision and I'm sick of this bollocks. It's so dirty watching this happen week after week. All right, this one did cheer me up a little bit, though. Uh, Tim Elliott is a guilty pleasure of mine. He's a scumbag, cheating little troll, and I love watching this man fight. I knew I was in for a treat when he was goofing around at the start with the silly cartwheel, and he really used every trick in the book to get the win in this one. Uh, he landed an elbow to the mush, which really started the ending sequence. He grabbed in a few treetops. This is MMA vernacular that I've never heard before. It sounds as goofy as this fight started out, but I'll bank that shit. And once he got Sue down to the ground, you knew it was going to be over. He irritated him with a few nasty shots before locking in an arm triangle at the end of the round. He squeezed his head so hard that blood was actually squirting out of his mouth. Uh, this man is so underrated and I love watching him fight. A great, great post-fight talk as well. What a dude. Can't wait to see him fight next. Alright, not really much to this one. They stood and banged and Nazrat smacked him up and won. Uh, I'm not usually a huge fan of fights that end with both men still standing, but Malaki was pretty much out on his feet, and as much of a cunt as I can be on these uh, videos at times, I don't want to see anyone taking unnecessary damage. Unless it's Paddy Pimlet, or Juliana Pena, or Ian Gary, or, or Bilal Mohamed. Do you know what? Never mind. Let's just save that for another video. It's a good win for Nazrat, but it's not looking good for Malaki. Uh, losses like this are a sign of massive decline, and I can see him getting brutalized more and more moving forward. Another easy win to see on the card. Nazrat isn't exactly a world beater, but there are some nice matchups to put him in moving forward. Yeah, Khalil Roundtree is going to have a top 10 rank next to his name on Monday morning, and I'm going to be honest, I'm quite bitter about it. Uh, he beat Medeskus, Medeskus uh, Bukowskis, Carl Robertson, and Chris Dalkus, who I'm going to be kind about here are all really shit fighters. Uh, he gets a robbery against Jacoby, and now he beats a washed Anthony Smith, who looked like a fat fucking pudding in there. Uh, did Khalil win fair and square? Absolutely. He handled Smith putting pressure on and landed with massive shots, so respect for that. Uh, Smith might be washed, but he's no bitch. But to call for a fight against Pereira, because that's the fight that everyone wants to see, his words obviously not mine, is fucking delusional. 
All right, this must be one of the easiest routes to a top eight I've ever seen. This is the same guy that got flatlined by Johnny Walker. Now, looking up now in the division, he has Krylov, Rakic, Yan, Ankalaev, uh, Jiri, Hill, and Pereira, who are all way too good for this guy. We saw his ceiling reach today, and good for you. I put him in against Volkan. Smith needs to retire. He has a job as an analyst and the pod with Bisping. Bisping. He needs to stop getting beaten up now. All right, this fight was ne never going to be good enough to main event of cards. Uh, the drawing between the corner men was more interesting than the fight. Uh, having said that, it was not terrible. Uh, I could go into detail on each round, but I'm just, I don't really want to. Uh, here's the roundup. Uh, your Don clearly thought uh, Gutierrez was a one-dimensional scrub, which is kind of half true, and that all he needed to do was to stand and catch him to win the fight, which obviously wasn't true. If Sadong had just kept boxing and not mixing it up, he could have completely fucked this one up. But once he got kicked in the face uh, at the start of the second round, which turned out to be a blessing in, dis in disguise, he decided to mix in the grappling and Gutierrez was never going to stand a chance after that. Uh, the grappling added to the dominant ground and pound in three rounds and also helped to set up clinch strikes and more success when breaking in others. Uh, the leg kicking game was pretty even when it did happen. And as I mentioned, Gutierrez munted Yudong in the face at one point. But aside from that, Yudong showed him the well-rounded levels. Uh, the embarrassing role Chris did in the last round when down four rounds was just embarrassing. Uh, this was the last fight night of the year and you know what? I'm glad. I hope they fade the apex out next year. It's dead. All right, so the weekend roundup in terms of what we got right, we got four fights wrong and I think it was seven, right? So seven and four on the card, which is not fantastic, but a big improvement on last week. So this took me to a record of 317, 144. Can't seem to get away from that magical number of 69. I don't know what it is. I'm not complaining. Anyway, massive card next weekend. Can't wait to break that one down. So I'll see you all for that. Have a great rest of the week and I'll probably see you on a roundabout Tuesday.